Hi, this is Zach, and in this video lecture, I'll be talking about the basic dplyr verbs. So what is dplyr? dplyr is a package which is part of the Tidyverse collection of packages. And many of the functions that are in dplyr make it easy for us to manipulate some data frame. So let's work with this data frame, which is pretty small and simple, so it, it, it's easy to illustrate what's going on. Right. So again, we have five students and four variables or, or columns. The first function that you learn is something called arrange. So you arrange the name of the data frame and the column which you want to arrange by, by default arrange arranges things in or sorts thing the rows in ascending order of course you might want to sort the rows in descending order in which case you use the desc function the next function is filter basically it allows you to keep a subset of the rows in for example if you want to keep those students who scored less than 60 points or less in the quiz, this is how you do it using filter, the name of the data frame, and the condition for selecting the rows. And th this red or orange rectangle shows you the rows that were not selected. If you use the select function, then it allows you to select only some of the, row of the columns of the data frame. So if you only want to keep the name and gender columns, then you just list them out explicitly. The other two columns are not selected, or basically they're deleted. Alternatively, you can use the hyphen to deselect columns. So if you want to delete the exam column, then you just write minus exam. Uh, and basically all the other columns that are not deleted are kept. There's also a function called rename, which changes the name of a column. So if you want to change the name of the column exam to final, you write final equals exam, and that's what happens. The mutates function allows you to create a new column. So for example, let's say the weighting of quiz is 30% and the weighting of the exam is 70%, then the total or the overall course score could be calculated using this equation. And basically it creates a new column called course with the correctly computed course scores. The function summarize is a bit different. It changes, basically it computes kind of summary statistics for the entire data frame. So for example, if you want to compute the mean exam score, it creates a new data frame with the column mean exam score equal to the mean of the exam scores. And now we're, we're going to talk about something a little bit more tricky, which is the pipe operator, uh, which is percentage greater than percentage. Basically, the pipe operator is a kind of shorthand a, a way to write code that is a bit more short and compact and easier to read. So uh, the pipe operator passes the object on the left hand side as the first argument of the function on the right hand side. So for example, if you want to write fx comma y, you could instead write x pipe fy. So the pipe operator is useful because you can do something called chaining which makes code easier to read. So for example, the version 1 of this code means take the students, group it by gender, and then summarize it. So it's quite easy to read from left to right. If you don't use pipes, uh, it's a, there's a bit, you have to create this uh, temporary variable x, which is the students grouped by gender, and then you summarize x. But actually you don't really need x is just a temporary variable so it's cleaner and more elegant to write 
the code using pipes. And you can actually do the piping, do write a long chain of pipes. So you could have A, pipe B, pipe C, pipe D, pipe E, and so on. So, uh, so it's important for you to know what the pipe means. Remember that basically it's take this left-hand side, inserts it in as the first argument of the function on the right-hand side. And here's the an example of the group by function. So group by basically splits a data frame into groups based on the columns that you specify. So for example, the, these are the males. This group by gender splits the rows into the groups with males and the groups with females. And then if you use the summarize after that, it computes the mean summary statistics for each group separately. So you compute the mean exam score for the females and the count, and the mean exam score for the males and the count. All right, let's go to the coding demo to see how that works. Of course, you have to load the tidyverse. And then this is the regular. Notice that the tidyverse loads the dplyr package. Then this is the regular student's data frame. Right. This is how you arrange the data frame from in e increasing order of exam score, in other words, lowest to highest. If you want to do it in decreasing order, that's this is how you do it with the DESC function. If you want to only if you only want to keep some of the rows, this is how you do it using the filter command, filter function. If you only want to keep some of the columns, this is how you use it. So select only the name and gender column, or delete all columns, ex delete the exam column and keep everything else. If you want to change the name of a column, this is how you do it. All right. So notice here I saved it in a new variable called new students because I don't want to change the original students uh, data frame. So the new students data frame the column is called final, but if you go back to the original student's data frame, the column is still called exam. Right. Okay, the mutates function creates a new column, like so. So create the new column for the overall course score. Note that if you want to save your changes to the original data frame, you have to assign the result to the original variable. Right. So when I ran this function mutate, the result has five columns, but the original data frame still only has four. So if I save it by writing students equals to mutate blah blah blah, then this time the, I've saved the changes and the students column has five columns. Students data frame has five columns. Alright, uh, let's now summarize to compute the mean score. And uh, the pipe operator, there's some uh, brief notes there. And let's run the group by. So this is it. So if you group by gender and then you compute the summaries for each group, then this is what you get. You can get the same result using the intermediate variable x, but it becomes like two, you know, two line, uh, two statements, programming statements instead of one. So I definitely prefer the version using pipes. That's all for now. See you next time. Bye.